The Centurion during its development is not that dissimilar to many other tanks. It underwent massive change, noted in Mark 1, Mark 5, Mark 10, etc., etc. One of them, and I'll just go along some of this stuff here, one of the changes is this massive fuel tank that's on the back. Without this, the tank had about a 35 mile uh, range. That's as far as it could go without refueling. And back during the, even as late as the, the mid 70s, the British fueled their vehicles, not by a huge truck, but hand bombing jerry cans. So this has been added on to give it a notable extended range. There was other, other tanks, other marks and prototypes that actually extended the whole hull back and incorporated this kind of thing inside. But that's what this has. Now another notable feature when we come along and we look at the suspension, this is typical of all your British tanks, even to this day. It's a horseman suspension. And that is that there's no uh, torsion bars going inside. You don't have to uh, take stuff. It doesn't take up any interior space. So each of these here is one unit. You'll see there's, there's two, it's, it's, just, it's covered there. But there's two wheels here and two wheels over there. And inside here, there's a horizontal spring that, that basically suspends and, and gives the, the, like a shock absorbing effect here. The beauty of this is um, that you can unbolt it and remove it. It's easy to fix when it gets damaged. Unlike the Christie suspension, which gives you a better ride, but it's not as easy to maintain. So this is fairly, fairly common. As a matter of fact, the, the predecessor, the, what came after the Centurion was the Chieftain, and it has the same, uh, the same uh, suspension system. It's a horse, uh, a horse suspension system. And um, even the uh, um, Challenger 1 and Challenger 2, again, continue with the same suspension system. So it's fairly unique. All British tanks uh, basically had this from the war on. They did not uh, adopt. The main battle tanks had this. So let's move forward here, you your return wheels, and uh, let's, uh, let's look at this front. Again, I mentioned earlier that it had to take a hit from an 88, a German 88, and this armored, you'll notice it's quite a slope. There's more slope that you'll see here uh, to give it a greater thickness. As, again, as you know, you got angle on armor, it, it, you gotta go through more of it rather than straight up. And there's quite a slope here, and this was up armored with additional armor. This particular model does not have that uh, additional armor on the glacius plate. Um, so that's the, the tank itself. If we go up to the top end here, we look at the turret. The, you'll notice the turret is a cast. It's a pretty rough cast, but it's very heavily armored. And the top has a, a welded on plate. Interesting part is there is no turret basket. In other words, when this turret revolves, you do not have um, a basket underneath. So the loader, who's not sitting in a chair, he's running around loading, he's got to watch his feet. Now that's not that dissimilar to Soviet tanks of the era, which uh, again is very interesting. Rough cast, welded on plate on the top, very thick. Now the master weapon. The Centurion started off with a 17-pounder, which was a very effective uh, weapon, uh, anti-tank weapon during World War II. And fairly quickly, they upgraded to a 20-pounder. So 17-pounder is a, uh, approximately a, a 76-millimeter, high velocity, very effective. Upgrading it to the 20-pounder just gave it that much more punch, and it was approximately 84-millimeter, the, uh, the shell across, the shell diameter. And it was very effective. Uh, they soon found that as the Soviet vehicles upgunned their vehicles, like on the T-54, T-55, to the 100-millimeters, um, that they actually put an L7 uh, cannon on it, and this came out about 56, 57, uh, and it was a uh, 105 millimeter. This particular cannon, we don't believe it's original on this vehicle, but this is a 20 pounder. So this is not the latest and, and the greatest, although the firing systems inside do reference L7. So we're still learning about this vehicle, but uh, it is very interesting, and it's a centurion, and man, it's, it's running and it's purring. If you found this video informative, and you want to know more about the Ontario Regiment Tank Museum and other videos, please check the link below. We'll be happy to tell you more.